All right. So we've got a special uh, podcast tonight. We're, we're talking Ohio cast podcast. We're talking Westbrook. We're talking the creator. We're talking the brains behind the operation at Westbrook. Greg Marks. Greg, welcome back again. How you doing? Hey, man. It's good to be back, man. I feel great. Okay. And uh, behind Greg, we have the three. I, I I guess the are these the are these the stars of the film? Yeah, a few of them. Okay. Yeah. So we got Joe, we got Wes, and we got Bellatrix. Okay. And this is a Washington film, correct? It's a Tacoma, yes, yeah. Sir. Oh yeah, T Town, man, all the way. You know, we okay. talked about the Rainier hats last time. Remember? Yeah. You well, you know, I'm a I'm a Seattle Rainier. I'm a or I'm a Tacoma Rainier fan. Yeah, I got my first really cool hat at the uh, Mariner, one of the Mariners games that I went to. Um, what a beautiful stadium, by the way. Yeah, love going there. Uh, and then our other guest is uh, Kevin Roberts. Kevin is going to be uh, what he's Joe in the film. Pardon me. He's Joe. Joe is his role. Yeah, in the bro. Film. Everybody loves Joe. Everybody, everybody loves Joe. It's like real life, guy- hey, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> This guy uh, at the table read, he just lit it up, man. He was focused, uh, was was on task. His uh, cadence, his character. Um, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better person to play Joe. No acting lessons either, huh, K-Rob? No. Um, no. Uh, not, not to that point. Um, I might be brushing up a little bit right now, uh, truth be told, uh, learning a couple things, but no, um, never, never been in front of a camera other than, uh, you know, interviewing with you and some of the wrestling media and uh, never in a school play or nothing like that. So, no, just, man, just okay, he's, in Meisner, he's in a Meisner class right now. <laughs> Getting after it. Come on, Joe, tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm taking some I'm taking some uh acting lessons right now. I'm I'm two lessons in. So uh we'll see when the film comes out, you know, if I learned anything. Greg, last time you and I talked was this fall. Um, you know, we talked about the film and where you guys were at, and uh, you know, it was still in the 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 developmental stages. There was no shooting done yet, there was no cast brought together, there was no table reads, there was none of that, right? Um no. We're, we're getting closer and closer to production beginning on the film. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Where would oh, you yeah. say we are right now, Greg? Um, actually, we're probably a couple months out. Uh, we've had to, since we're, we had a number of celebrities come on, so we had to join uh, a union, uh, the SAG union. So that changed a lot of stuff with all the paperwork. And um, there's a lot of stuff that uh, people don't know about. I didn't think it would be this hard to make a wrestling movie. I had to Talk to the NCAA, uh, the WIAA, and U.S. Wrestling because I had to make sure I wasn't breaking any rules or anything like that, which there were some that I could have possibly broke. Um, so that part has kind of put us back a little bit um, with the uh, with all these different entities being involved in it. So tell me about the the, the two main stars of the film. You have a high school um, girl wrestler, uh, Kamaya, right? Yes. Uh Kamaya Kamaya Garlin. Mm-hmm. Kamaya Garland, and then the 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 boy star of the film is Oregon State All American Brandon Kaler, correct? Yes, that is correct. And then we have Kevin Roberts as Joe, kind of like um we're gonna talk vision quest. He's like the guy that works in the hotel with Loud and Swain type deal, right? The wise guy, the guy that no. No, nah, bro. Help me out. Tell me. He's like he's like Mickey and Rocky. Got it. What's awesome about that is that's Kevin in real life. He's kind of like Mickey. He's kind of like Mickey telling you how to train, what you need to do, and he runs camps like that, and it's awesome. I, yeah. I love the energy, and I've been doing camps. Kevin, we've been doing camps for 15 years now. Think about it. You're a bum, Zeb. <laughs> yeah, no. Wild. Yeah, something like that, right? 12, yeah. 12 maybe? 12, maybe 15 years? No, you 15, and I? 15. I brought Ian out in 2009. Yeah, I got brought to wrestle Ian out him when he was like a, What was he, like a freshman the first time I wrestled him? Sophomore. He was a sophomore. sophomore. School, and uh, the Lara dude beat him, stole his lunch, beat him within an inch of his life. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Camps at Oregon State, but yeah, we've been I've been doing camps with Ke- well, videoing Kevin doing camps for 15 years now. It's wild. Well, Kevin, you you didn't realize it was that long, did you? No, man. Time. Uh... Oh man, time is going. It's a it's a thief. It is a it's a well, yeah. I mean, the phones are a thief. They take your time, but Greg, yeah. talk to yeah. me about his character, Joe. And how he's a Mickey type and what his role is in the film as much as you can give us. Don't give too have, much away, Greg. I'm not going to. Thank you for saying that, Kevin. Um, <laughs> um he's uh he's a he's a very important character to the main character, uh Wes. Um, sort of like a father figure type type. Okay. So yeah. I mean, I don't know what you want me to tell you. I mean, because uh, Kevin has some of the some of the best lines in the movie. I'll just say that. I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked. That's the guy I'd give the the best lines to. If I'm being yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Uh, Let me ask you a question, though, Zeb, real quick. Let me ahead. ask you a question real quick. Were you surprised that Kevin is being in a movie? When he first told me, I was like, "Yeah, okay, K. Rob, you're you're." Uh, K. Rob gets fired up about things. Kevin gets very excited <laughs> about things. And then I, I could never really picture it. And then he connected you and I, and then I got to have a conversation with you. Uh-huh. And we were talking about rounds of, of, of raising money, um, the people you were starting to bring on. And then when we spoke, um, what's crazy is that the actors union was striking when we, when you and I talked. Yes. About them. yes. And you, we didn't really, we weren't really into that. You didn't factor that in yet. And I, I, and I didn't put two and two. You understand, man. I'm I'm a simple, I'm a social studies uh, career teacher, man. I'm not. I don't know anything about Hollywood. I don't know anything about film production, right? So when you tell me things, I'm trying to be all ears. So yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't know what to think, to be honest with you, Greg. And and now that I'm seeing production posters, it's getting closer to you guys shooting. Um, there's multiple shoot dates. It sounds like now multiple. Oh, yeah sections it sounds like what you guys are doing i'm not really i'm just telling you what i hear and yeah. quasi and, and and that's where i'm at but yeah i mean yeah now yeah yeah i didn't believe it at first but now it's it's coming to fruition and i'm excited about it to be honest with you me too um i'll tell you this though if it wasn't for uh uh kevin and uh jeffrey kaler and kirk elliott just to name a few people this film wouldn't be where it's at right now because we have chael sonnen we have um what's shoot's name? Uh Frank. Frank Jasper. Frank Jasper. Um Josie Bissett from 9021 or not 90210, but uh Merrill's place. Uh who else we got, Kev? Uh that we're working on. Talk to Misha Tate. As long as we don't interfere with her schedule, she's down. Uh I mean, it's just these people are uh, have treated us so good and um, none of them have said no. Uh, just depends on when we're shooting, but yeah, they love the script and, and they're all in and I've had to rewrite the script probably about 20 times because the people keep jumping on. So it's getting exciting, man. Oh, and, uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Hall, uh, not Hall. I'm so bad with names. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous to be honest with you. Uh, Shane Sparks. Shane Sparks, my guy. Yeah. So Shane Sparks and Chell Sonnen are going to be live commentating while they're wrestling so we're gonna have four cameras going at the same time i love it it's gonna be insane man how did you get shane i know that kevin you know is good friends with with chael p um papa chael right um uncle uncle to me uncle uncle chael uncle chael uncle chael okay (laughs) i know kevin's kind of the connection with chael yeah. But how did you get Shane? Did Shane approach you? How did that work with Shane Sparks? Uh, he talked to, I believe, who, who was it? He talked to Kirk, Kevin. I think he talked to Kirk. And uh, somehow, um, I didn't even know who he was. And I looked him up and go, man, he's like perfect, you know, for because his well, boy. Well, yeah, he, he, he we, we, we chatted. And then uh, and then I, I put him in touch. I put you guys in touch. Yeah. So Kev did that. But and Shane- then... Shane is the the voice of Big Ten wrestling, right? Like Man. he's taken over the he's now the voice and the face of, of Big Ten wrestling, which, if, as you know, is the best product in in the world as far as wrestling production and and as far as a league, it, it's it, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. he's big time. Yeah, Kev's been Kev's been hooking it up, man. He's he, Kev's pushing for that producer credit, man. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get that producer credit. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, then 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 I get then I get to uh, you know, maybe go on that red carpet or something. Oh, you're gonna do that anyways, man. <laughs> Greg, what would you say if you were gonna like when I'm reading the credits, how many different roles and how many different, you know, hats have you worn? in the production of this film and the creation of this film and the, and the, the, the beginnings. I, I mean, it sounds like you're going to be literally half the credits are going to be Greg March, right? Like what, have, what all roles have you assumed in Westbrook and the creation of it and, and everything behind it? Like where, how many different legit roles Man. do you have? <laughs> um, most of them. That's all I can really say because I mean I wrote it, I'm producing it, I'm raising all the funds for it. Um, I, I'm doing the wardrobe, I'm doing the um, casting, but I'm not doing it all by myself um, because once once I start directing, when the film starts going, I'll have other people. I'm just basically setting up the foundation for people that are coming on because I'd have to pay them to do all this work that I'm doing uh, ahead of time. So I'm doing it all myself. I even learned how to vid edit or edit videos today. You know what I mean? So um, I'm just doing it now. But when I start directing and we get into it, I, I won't have time. I'll have people that I hired to do that. And I'll just give them the credit because um, I don't really need, I really don't need a lot of credit, man. I just want to make a good movie. You know what I'm saying? As long as the movie's good and they know it's my movie. I mean, when I was at State this weekend, they were calling me the Westbrook guy. Hey, they don't even know my name. Hey, you're the Westbrook guy. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Love it. Uh, yeah. Talk to us about your two leading, uh, your two leading characters, uh, Kamaya and Brandon. Um, why, why those two, and how are you able to cast them? And what's the process been like for them? Because she just finished her season, was a state placer in Washington. Yep, she is a week out of the, or two weeks out of the Pac-12, right? Yeah. Um, how do you, how are you able to, are you able to communicate with them? And like you said, you don't want to break these rules, right? There's NCA rules. I'm sure. There's Washington state rules. There's all these different rules that you got to do it here too. There's a, there's an actor's union and actor's guild. There's all these different things. How are you able to juggle all this and why those two is your main characters? Um, so Kamaya, I was at, I think it was at, uh, Centralia's when I saw her and I was just looking around. This is like the very beginning. I'm just looking for, a person that's not over or under, you know what I mean? And that has a good personality and that's, you know, seems like a genuinely nice person. And I saw her sitting on a bench um, playing with her siblings and stuff. She has a little sister and stuff. And so she's laughing. I was looking at her like, man, that looks like a good kid, right? Then she gets out there on the mat and gets this girl in the head and the arm. Her legs go flying in the air and slams the, you know, what out of her. And I'm like, whoa. That's that's the person. <laughs> and then I talked to her mom and uh, everything else from there is kind of history. She's uh, she's a very strong minded wrestler um, and she's she's pretty good. She's getting there. She's only a freshman, you know, but she's getting there and she's doing good. Uh, BK, um, he's off limits a little bit right now because he's doing his MBA. And so I want to <laughs> respect him wrestling and respect his school because that's first. Um, but when I met him. I met him through his dad, Jeff, uh, just, we said, it's so funny. So Jeff invited me to have lunch. So I go in this place and there's this one kid sitting there and he says, you must be Greg. And I go, yeah, who are you? <laughs> he goes, I'm Brandon. I'm like, what? You know, mind blown. So I sit down and then Jeff comes and sits down. I go, man, what's going on, man? So we start talking and I'll tell you, man, uh, Brandon Kaler, as tough as he is and as hard as he wrestles and everything, man, that guy's funny. That guy's funny and he could switch it. You know what I mean? So I was like, yep, yeah, that's it. So I had to get a Peruvian wife to match our mixed child, which is Brandon. Okay. <laughs> so so you, you had what you needed in, in the casting. And when you're casting, it, it's really hard to do wrestling because they've had non-wrestlers do wrestling characters. Yeah. And it, and it's it's real hard. It's real yeah, hard. This... Like, like I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Matthew Modine wasn't a real good wrestler as an actor. You know, he's a great actor. I understand that, yeah. but you know, all the stuff looked like junior high. It looked, you know, the, the Jasper guy was more believable. Right. Cause I believe is he, he's yeah. a Lane high guy, right? Uh, K Rob. 
He is. Yeah. Coeur yeah. d'Alene. Yeah. yeah. Coeur d'Alene High. So, so, so Jasper was more believable, right? The shoot, right? Frank Jasper. Yeah. And um, I think bringing Brandon Kaler and, 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 and Kabaya in is like, I, I'm, I'm really fired up because you have two people with background, um, yeah. high level backgrounds in wrestling. Yeah. And that's got me fired up. And I, I know he's off limits. When is the first time you're going to be able to have everyone together as much as you can have everyone together if you can share um, that? That probably is not going to happen until we start shooting. Um, but I'm also having auditions this uh, weekend. And I kind of required that some of the actors that I have already cast, since they have never acted before, to still come and audition so they know what it's like to feel that. Um, so I'm doing that. But I want to back up a second. Go ahead. Every single wrestler, referee in this movie are real wrestlers and real referees. That's so all. all the, oh yeah, all the matches you see, they're all, I'm recruiting them from the high schools. And they're all coming out and yeah. That's pretty awesome. Okay. So you and I talked in, in the fall. Um, what inspired you to make, and you, you you gave me the answer, but to give people more background, and you know, I know we're, we're kind of backtracking from when we talked in the fall, but why make a wrestling movie with all wrestlers? I mean, everybody you're talking about has some type of wrestling background, yes, right? Absolutely. Ch yes. Chael's an All-American at uh, the University of Oregon, um, fought in the UFC. He's one of the top voices in uh, MMA um, and the sport of wrestling, you know, he's one of the biggest media icons in um, combat sports in the world, right? Like we're being yeah. honest, Uncle Chael. Yeah. Um, Misha Ch Misha Tate, right? Obviously, she's she's trained wrestling. She's MMA. You're getting all these people some heavy hitters. Why stick with wrestling? Why is wrestling so important to you, Greg? Um, to be honest with you, and I just did a video about this. Um, I used to wrestle and I had an injury which caused me to not be able to do any sports ever again. And when I was coming up with the concept of a movie to make, I wanted to make a, a movie that wouldn't cost me a ton of money, but I could make a good movie that would be interesting. So I thought about wrestling. I looked it up and there wasn't that many wrestling movies, especially high school wrestling movies. I said, OK, this is something that I could probably do. Uh, but I will tell you this, Zeb. Um, from then to now, my whole perception and drive has changed because of people like you and people like K-Rob, because I watch uh, your your pot, your uh, videos and stuff, and I watch you on social media, um, and K-Rob talks to me. I mean, all these people just have um, influenced me to where I feel like I have a responsibility to the wrestling community uh, to make this movie and make it the best that I can make it and just try as hard as I can, you know? Um, I was talking uh, to Kirk earlier about like the parents. Those parents, some of them can't afford for their kids to wrestle, but you know what? They take everything they got just so that their kids can do that sport. You know what I mean? And uh, when I was at state, there's some of these guys that have been working their whole time. And, you know, you don't think about the second placers and the third placers, you know, that is um, a hard pill to swallow when you study and work that hard and don't, get the championship. So these kind of things inspire me because I've watched, I've gone to some of these matches and watched some of these kids, uh, especially Silas high school and to see them work that hard and do good. And all of a sudden, boom, last minute they're, they're done. Uh, so I just feel like it's time to make a good movie about wrestling that a whole family can come to. And it just, it just inspired me to be even better at what I'm doing right now. So my mindset at the beginning, when I set out is different than my mindset now. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm super, uh, just very curious to see how this is going to come out. And I, I want to know how production is going to work. I'm, I'm, I really like how you're learning and dipping into wrestling and immersing yourself in wrestling. I would really like to learn more about the film. You know, uh, I mean, just the whole process that you're talking about. Like when we talk, I'm just like, man, Greg obviously knows about making a film and obviously you know, everything you need, you need money to do everything right. That's a big yeah. part of it. Uh, and I just, I, it's just, it's fascinating to me. Like I, yeah. like, I just want to listen. I don't even want to like provide you with questions. I just want to listen to you talk, man. Yeah. Well, all I do you, the most of the time. For you, you're welcome to come on set any day that we're filming. That's awesome. I'm okay. Yeah. And you can come and, you know, just, you're, you're more than welcome to come on set and, uh, cause it's a closed set, but you're welcome. Well, okay. So there you go right there. That's something difference between an open and a closed set 
obviously a closed set is like people are not allowed to observe it. You're not allowed to just bebop in, right? Open set would be like whenever they do things where it's like a car scene or an outside scene where you really can't stop the public from seeing what you're doing, right? No, uh, open set is when anybody can just come on set. That's like any, anybody can just bebop on the set. Yeah, yeah. It's like open set. Bring your friend, bring your cousin, bring your, it don't matter. <laughs> but this one, so we actually have security set up because, you know, we're going to have some celebrities there, um, you know, just in general to protect the actors. And because, you know, what if somebody sees like Josie Bissett or Chael or, and they just run up there, hey, you know, that's, we got to have our people comfortable and relaxed and safe. So, but you're welcome. I used to say, Zeb Miller, if you got a problem with it, I'll call Greg right now. And he's going to come out here and chew you out because he already told me I could come here. <laughs> also, I'm worried about Joe. I want Joe, you know, Joe's safety. Joe's the one of the most important actors in the film. Kevin Roberts, when people start seeing him, right, K-Rob? Oh, man. You, you're, <laughs> you're, you're too much, man. Come on. Uh, no, I... Uh, it's been interesting because as Greg learns, you know, um, a lot more about, you know, wrestling and in, in 2023, 2024, um, and even though he wrestled, you know, in high school, um, has got into the wrestling community, at least here, especially on a local level and all that, and just broadened, you know, his experience and all that. And the same has been with me um, on the other side of it. Um, kind of like you, Zeb, like learning about, um, at least a little bit about this whole process and, and, and how things happen and what's involved and man, this guy's working his tail off. Um, so it's been a great experience so far and we haven't even, uh, you know, we haven't even, uh, started filming yet, but I've learned a lot. It's, it's been, uh, pretty cool. Greg, can you tell me what what can you tell me about the table read? Who was present? Um, where was that? And, and you know what what can you share about the table read when you guys got together and you read the script? How many people were present? Was Kaylor there? Kamaya there? Who was all there for the table read? So we had stand-ins because Brandon was wrestling and Kamaya was wrestling. So we had stand-in readers for them to yeah. read their parts. Uh, but most of everybody else was there. Uh, Chell didn't really have to be there because he's just doing live commentating. He has very few written lines. Um, but it was interesting. We had, I think, 27 actors, K-Rob, something like that. Yeah, yeah, cl yeah, yeah, close to that. Wow, yeah. that's a that's a huge production. That's a lot of people, yeah. man. Yeah, oh, it was so cool, man, because you could actually take the words and put it, you know, you could close your eyes and just like you're visualizing in your head what it's going to come out like. Because, I mean, we have some... Even like not the top named actors, there's some actors that we have that are really good. Isn't that right, K-Rob? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really. You know, and that's what I, I found out. I mean, there's, you know, a lot of really talented people. You might not have seen them yet, um, even though some of them I, I found out, you know, some of the stuff that they've been in. But, yeah, they weren't your, you know, the people that, you know, you go see in Mission Impossible or something, but really talented people. Kind of like you know, how many, I think of it as how many great, um, I mean, you go to some honky tonk or something sometimes and there's a band up there singing and you're like, oh my God, like, how are these guys not huge? They're phenomenal. But, you know, I mean, so some really good people. Um, and, you know, that, that, that was kind of cool to, to learn from them too. Um, obviously they um, ask me questions about wrestling. And I asked them questions about what I need to be doing in, 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 in this new, in this new deal. Yeah. Kevin was uh, talking to uh, Josie. So that's why I say everybody loves Joe. So Josie Bissett is, is Kevin's new friend. Cause she, she likes Kevin and Patrick. Uh, she thought they were really cool people and she's a really nice lady too. Okay. Uh, yeah, I remember Josie. Man, wow, that that takes me back when I see a picture. You know, just just googling her and, and refresh. I'm like, wow, I re totally remember being like a kid growing up watching that show. Right? I was. Like, it's a '90s, right? It's like a '90s. Yeah, '90s. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Uh Greg, where does the process go from here? Right? Like, where where are we at? How far are we from the first shoot, first day of production? 
How many different levels of production will there be? Will there be multiples? And I know that you're going to actually film some at a high school. So you're probably going to have to wait till summer break for some of that and or spring yep. break, right? Yep. Originally, it was supposed to be spring break, but now yep. sounds like is it pushed back to yep. summer break? I don't summer. know. Yeah, summer break. Uh, just, you know, really what's holding us back is, um, so with SAG, you have to have a certain amount of money in the bank for payroll or else you can't shoot the film because they want to make sure their actors get paid. Okay, so so, so Greg, you got to tell people what, I don't know what SAG is. Uh, what Screen is, Actors Guild. Okay, so the Screen Actor, well, I know what it is, but like the- Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, like So people don't know. We're, we're, we're like, we know like a half Nelson, a whip over, a, <laughs> you know, we know a fireman's carry, we know riding yeah. time, we know stand up off bottom. They don't know what the Screen Actors Guild is. And that was when, when you and I talked in the fall, SAG Screen Actors Guild was on actually literally on strike. Yeah. We Nothing were, got made. Nothing got made for the longest time is what people don't know. Like 18 months maybe, right? Yeah, that yeah, was a long time. It, it was, was a long, long time. time. But the Screen Actors Guild really dictates a lot of what you're doing because the actors have to unionize in order to get a fair wage. Otherwise, Netflix, Hulu, whoever makes these productions, yeah. right? They're 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 starting to shoot their own. Will pay them pennies on the dollar. Listen, I hear about what some of these people make, some of these actors in the Screen Actors Guild make what they've made off of films. And I want to throw up. Yeah. It, it's insane to hear like Jonah Hill made $60,000, $50,000 off the Whoop of Wall Street just because he wanted to work with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. It was something crazy. Like, like just hearing yeah. those things, I'm like, what? Yeah. What? That's all that guy made out of that film. And then um, one dude who did Hustle and Flow, he made $12,000. Yeah. He made $12,000. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, that guy's a megastar. What yeah. I forget his name, but like the dude's a megastar. He's like, I made twelve thousand dollars off of hustle and flow. Yeah, and he doesn't get royalties. <laughs> yeah, but see, that's why we're we're doing it different. Um, yeah, we're going to self distribute uh, to begin with uh, until we um, create um, enough money to pay the investors back because we do have some investors, but we are also launching an Indiegogo, which I'll probably launch tonight, which is a crowdfunding. Um, so the Screen Actors Guild requires um, a certain amount of SAG actors in the film, uh, even extras. Even though we have 100 extras, they can be volunteers, but at least five of them have to be SAG. So wow. we have to go through a, um, a payroll company it's called Entertainment, um, Entertainment Partners is what it's called. And so they handle all the, the payroll and everything, the, the actors sign the paperwork and it's like a time card. Uh, but they require that you have a certain percentage of money in the bank because you have to give that money to them and put it in a trust so that at the when it's all said and done, everybody gets paid. So I have investors that aren't investing right now, but three months from now they will. Well, that's not going to help me because we want to film in June. So I have to take the money that has already been invested and I also have to do crowdfunding because I just want, I don't want to be caught with the surprise of not having enough money. So, so I'm, I'm making sure that I have enough money and more than enough money. So when they say, well, you need, you know, a hundred grand in the, in the bank, then I can say, okay, I got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you talk to me about these things, I mean, it's just, it's so like, I, I'm so out of my element. I mean, even when you're you're explaining something like closed set versus open set, right? Like, I'm just like, I, I never, I never realized that. Right. Like, it's just like Hollywood's a lot of smoke and mirrors, right. To, to me at least. Right. When I look at it, I'm like, oh, how, how are they doing that? How do they make this? It's, it's such a fascinating thing um, just to see how things are made. And when you have a small um, social studies, uh, uh, I, I guess uh career teacher brain, it's hard to imagine all these, th you know what I mean? Like there's just so many things, so many things in the credits that you just mentioned, right? Like you're like, ah, executive producer, director, costumes, makeup, right? And then there's, there's, there's shooting locations. There's all these different things. You, you got to do editing. You got all, you have to, you shooting all this stuff. Then you got to put it together into a, 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 a film that makes sense. Right. And you know, it can't yeah. suck. <laughs> yeah. Music score. Oh yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's just your name, hundreds of jobs. 
Yeah. Um, but that also creates jobs, which is another good thing. And the thing that I do like about um, the Screen Actors Guild is that it gives um, the film a lot more credibility. Um, so that people that are out there know like, okay, this is a real film. It's not just a little, let's all get together and have some fun and make a video. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So one of my, uh, one of my buddies, uh, is, he was Dolph Ziggler in the WWE and now he's, uh, he's, his name's Nick Namath, but his brother is in the Screen Actors Guild, um, Ryan Namath, and his brother's in the AEW, uh, all, all elite wrestling, Kevin. Uh, all elite wrestling yeah, yeah. it's uh it's uh, yeah, a yeah an, another promotion you know everybody knows wwe uh yeah another league isn't and, there a documentary uh, out about that all elite I, i'm sure they do i don't know why they wouldn't yeah they it's probably just the watch. level below it's like we're all the yes. wwe yes they're right they're the next level right below yeah. that dude they got a the documentary that's so good it's really good you have to check yeah. it out i gotta check that out i mean i'm i'm, I'm fired up because well, I see him here. I see this guy, you know, three, two, three times a year. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a cool guy. He's a St. Ed's guy. He wrestled for for uh, Coach Greg Urbis and um, John Heffernan at St. Edward. And they're good guys. And one was my college teammate. But I just never realized. I never realized how much people's creative and, and, and you know, their intellectual property, right, it, is really pirated and stolen from them to a degree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that that's why that's important. I'm in a, you know, I'm in a teacher's union. So it's like, I, I, I get it. I get it. Right. But it's like, it's just crazy to think about like um, when you bring this, cause we weren't talking SAG. We weren't talking that at all. No. That was not no. a thing in the, in the, in the fall when we spoke on it, Greg. And man, it's, it's just, it's, it's fascinating to learn about it. Um, Where do you think right now, um, you know, we can just talk in in, in, in expectations, right? Um, obviously, there's bumps in the road and things change, right? Um, where do you think you are from first shot, everybody on set? Where do you think? How far out are you now? Uh, it'll be sometime in June. Sometime in June? Yeah. I mean, every, everything's there. I mean, we have all the locations. We have all the cameramen. We have all the cameras. Uh, we have our insurance ready to be set up. Um, we everything is set. I'm, I'm signing uh, SAG paperwork next week. You know what I mean? It's like we're slowly moving. Our, the movie got registered with the WGA, which is the Writers Guild of America, which you have to is a requirement of SAG to have your um, script uh, registered. So, I mean, and we're just picking away at it, man. We're just picking away at it. Hey, Kevin, what do you think the biggest thing you've learned about? Um... I, I guess, I, I mean, I know you don't know how to make a movie, right? But like, what have you learned about, you know, sometimes I think Hollywood can be a dirty business, right? We've talked about dirty business, but what what have you learned, Kevin, do you think? What's the biggest thing you have learned as as Joe, as a, a first time actor in a movie? What what have you learned about the biz? Oh, um, boy, that's a lot to unpack. I mean, I've learned everything from, from Greg, just, um, about you know distribution about you know uh renting out certain venues uh you know theaters uh for showings um and then you know obviously like this is all the like the non the non acting stuff or the not non stuff like not on set um you know the things like the hoops um you know that he talked about going through um the union and and then you know probably i guess i mean there's a little bit of everything i mean probably other things like you know um and 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 i still haven't seen all of it right so you know just off the top of my head though like the different lighting the different i mean just when we did a couple photo shoots you know for those posters you're looking at and stuff um you, you know, the different nuances of that and everything and um, just how much work really is probably put into this. Um, I mean, again, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be filmed in, you know, a week or 10 days or whatever it ends up being sometime between that. And I mean, Greg's been putting in, you know, um, when it gets said and done, probably two years um and i don't know if i'm exactly right on that but 
you know, and the guy's got a regular job. And I think that was probably a thing I got to realize too, is, you know, um, you were talking about the big star that made 12 grand or whatever. I mean, Greg has a job. He has a, a, a daily nine to five job, uh, probably longer than that some days. And then does this on the back end or on downtime or on weekends or whatever. So a lot of people doing heavy lifting um, to, to get it off the ground that aren't, you know, on the, in the scenes. Yeah. T Terrence Howard is the guy I was talking about, right? Terrence Howard is the actor I was talking about, Greg. You, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrence Howard made $12,000. I saw in an interview. He said he, made, he made $12,000. Dude, we're talking about one of the biggest stars in Hollywood got absolutely just mangled in his contract negotiations, right? Like he probably was like, I just want to do the movie. That's yeah. what I find out a lot. A lot of these folks um, that are screen actors, get, whether they're in it or not, right? Like when you leave yourself exposed like that, think about how much money that guy's left on the table oh, with an iconic geez. performance like that, right? Yeah, but I will say this, look at him now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it did, you know what I mean? It, it, it led to, and he always kind of plays the same yeah. bad rotten dude. Yeah. Right? He's good but at he, it. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's like Captain right? America. He's, he, dude, he's the real deal, right? Like, I, I, but like, you just think about like what, uh, like the top tier people are getting. They're, they're getting private yeah. jets, they're getting 50 plus million dollars. You know, Tom Hank, uh, uh, you know, Tom Hanks, uh, Tom Cruise, Schwarzenegger, The Rock, people like that. I mean, uh, uh, Channing Tatum. You know, Channing Tatum played a wrestling role, right? Like, he was in a wrestling movie, and I yeah. know he watched all the movies, right, Greg? Yeah. You went through and you watched all of them, right? Yeah, yeah. What's your assessment of everything you um, watched? I was watching, so at the time when I, because I've watched all these movies by two or three times, pretty much, like 13 of them. But um, after working with uh, K-Rob and Jeff and Kirk, because I would sit with them when people are wrestling, or I watch them coach, and I'm looking at what they're what they what they were saying to the wrestler and how the wrestler was reacting, and his um, he was good, but you could tell like some of the grabs and some of they weren't that they, they just didn't look real to me. You know what I mean? I liked his acting, but you just can't you just can't fake. Uh, high school wrestling or that kind of type of wrestling, you know, folk style wrestling, or you just can't fake it. You just can't, you can go soft at it, but in order to go soft at it, you have to do that repetition so many times to be able to even do it softly. <laughs> you know what I mean? To make it like real and with the weight and everything. So I just think that it's just almost all the movies I can tell, just especially now I'm looking like, no, 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 no. You know, oh, they stopped him right there. They have him stay right there. They put the camera on him and they told him to wince. Okay, go. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can just tell. But yeah, that's what I learned. Kevin, what, what, I do you, what do you think, Hollywood? How have they done on, on movies? And, you know, you obviously were in college coaching in Division One for 20 plus years. How do you think? Well, I got, hey, can, can, I, can I tell a story about that real quick? Yeah, go. I would love. I'd love. Okay. Of course, I want a K. Rob story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <doesn't>. Okay. <laughs> so, um, back up a little bit. When I first met Greg, um, and you know, we, well, you know, I like to talk, right? And so, um, I was talking to this guy, and like, oh yeah, that's cool. Oh yeah, wrestling, man. Right? You know, uh, you're gonna make a movie. Cool. And. Um, you know, so I was, I was kind of, um, at first just, uh, being a resource, like, you know, what, what he, um, you know, he wanted, he wanted to get smartened up on, on wrestling and because he's been very adamant, he wants it to be like a, a, a very good, wholesome family movie they can all go to, but also the wrestling scenes wants to be very real in that. So, you know, we started, um, we started talking and, 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 you know, obviously with, um, you know, knowing people just, man, Zeb, I mean, not to go on here, but this guy had to do everything. Like he's got to find places to shoot. He's got to find vendors to, for uniforms. And so he was talking to, to you know, uh, talking to me like, hey, do, do you know, who can I call here? Give me, give me a couple uh, just leads, this and that. We're talking about everything. Then it came to where he pitched to me 
And that's just the point of my story. <laughs> um, sorry. Took a minute to get there. <laughs> About uh, helping direct or oversee the stunts. And I stunt coordinator. Like, stunt, coordinator. stunt coordinator. He's like, hey, Rob, you, you, I think you really know your stuff. You could be an asset, you know, to, to this production and stuff. So I, I want to pitch to you being um, involved in this in this production and as a stunt coordinator. And now all of a sudden, you know, being the big action movie guy that I am, like all sorts of movies, but I was <laughs> like, oh, man, is there going to be a scene like the kids? What kids being kids on weekends? What a car going off like a cliff, like a police chase. I don't have. Hey. I don't have a real background in coordinating stunts, but yeah, I'm in, man. What what do I got to do? Then I found out it was just lingo, movie lingo for the wrestling scenes, the stunts. I was like, you know, is is uh, is 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 uh, Stallone coming in and be being gonna climb the climb the ice, you know, like in uh, oh, what was that one? Uh, Cliffhanger, uh, cliffhanger, cliffhanger, yeah. I'm not, yeah. He, he needs me to direct this stuff. All right, hey, dude, I'm in. Um, I don't turn down a good opportunity. So anyway, getting back to the realism and the authenticity of the production, uh, the wrestling, um, I was like, gosh, I don't want to say no, but I wonder if this guy knows how hard it is to replicate wrestling. And I'm thinking, you know, he's he's going to have these like Disney Channel actors, like the sweet life of Josh and, and Morty or whatever, you know, and like these guys like, I can't teach these guys how to wrestle, man. Like, I, I don't know if this guy, and I wonder how many takes this is. Is it slow motion? Like, what is this? Then weeks later, I found out, oh, Brandon Kaler. What? Oh, okay. Now we're talking, man. Oh, this is going to be okay. So I was a little bit nervous. I was like, I don't know if I can teach this guy to get in a stance, let alone make this look really <laughs> real. They're not real wrestlers, but they are all real wrestlers. Every kid in there is like a high school wrestler. The guys in the background doing the drills, going through the practices, like every kid in there, um, you know, is, is, uh, is, a at least a pretty good high school wrestler. Yeah. So, they're just, no, yeah. Yeah. That, that was kind of my, uh, you know, my flow, I guess, uh, you know, getting into the film and, and figuring out. And then one day he told me that uh, I already he, know what he, you was, say. <laughs> he was he was putting me in. He was putting me into a role. Did you write Joe specifically for K-Rob? Yes. So wow. when I met, because the way he talks and the way he moves, well, yeah, you know, and uh, <laughs> you just wrap her around there and then you go and yeah, uh, I go, that's Joe. Come on, man. Come on, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, come on, Steph. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, I love it. So how, yeah. many times, how many times, Greg, have you rewritten the the story? How many times have you rewritten the um... script? Probably 15 times. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I, I remember just rewrote it when you day before out, yesterday. Okay. Well, you rewrote it yesterday? Day before yesterday, because I had to have a locked script and I had to add um uh Mr. Jasper. Frank Jasper. Okay. The shoot. Yeah. So Frank Jasper is shoot in uh in, in vision. No, no. Here's the thing: is Frank Jasper and he has a kid. His kid is Maximilian. Maximilian is the one that Wes battles with the whole time through the whole season. Are you serious? Yeah, bro. That's no, amazing. this movie's epic. This movie's epic. You have no idea. Yeah, nobody has any idea. I'm. You got me fired. I'm like. I'm. When you're dropping these nuggets on me, I like it. When you drop these like nuggets, knowledge, oh. you know, little knowledge, little, you know, like, yeah. like a teaser, if you will. A little, a, yeah. little bit, a little sample. I like a little sample. Yeah. Like, and I had to actually uh, ask Frank permission for some of the things we were going to do to make sure that we didn't overstep our bounds with Vision Quest. Um, so that was kind of a, he kind of worked with me on that. And and we came up with a really, a uh, couple of really good scenes with him and his son. Hey, we're, we're uh, a week past the 39th anniversary of the release date of Vision Quest. Did you know that? Yes, he told me. Yeah, it just it just <laughs> um, 
turned 39 years old and man, do I feel old. And you know what, what's crazy about vision quest to tie all this in together. Kevin is from Spokane, Washington. Kevin was probably a little kid. Well, you weren't a kid. You were probably like, like 12 or 13, Kevin. Yeah. About, 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 sure. 12, about 12 years old. Yeah. 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 You remember when there was it a big deal when they were shooting at Kevin in Spokane? I don't remember anything about that. Um, about that to be honest i remember it you know being a, a movie that i heard about and and wanted to watch and uh i i think the first time um uh, i think the first time um i wasn't allowed to watch it i think um because i was a little bit young um that's what my mom said uh pro probably probably the guy girl scene you know or, or yeah. something but uh carla carla and and, and modine yeah, 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 Linda Fiorentino. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, I think I ended up seeing it maybe, maybe, maybe about eighth grade, maybe ninth grade or something like that. But uh, yeah, no, to tie it all together, you know. And now Greg's film is being for, filmed in Tacoma, which is just on the west side of Washington. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, I know some of the people in that movie. Um, probably, probably five or six people that were in that. Um, way back when that, that are still around these parts and that I knew uh, some of them growing up. And then, um, you know, th there were, there were people in the movie that were, you know, in the wrestling world so that I'd see as coaches or referees or, um, and uh, yeah, so that kind of brings it home. That's, that's kind of a full circle um, thing um, just from my perspective growing up here and seeing landmarks like oh that bridge yeah no oh that hotel i've driven by that hotel i the stadium you know oh the 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 famous log scene you know like we used to go to football games there high school football games there you so took cool. me to that stadium kevin took, I took you to there. that stadium i, a couple I took months you there before they tore it down a couple months before they tore it down um and it was supposed to if you can dig up pictures of that oh yeah yeah we have yeah i shot Devin, video I did I shot a we, bunch of videos. What? Zeb, Zeb, Zeb shot video there. I took him there. We were on that side of town. I took him there. And it was a couple months before it was torn down. And I think it was supposed to be torn down earlier. But there was yes. a delay on it because there was a tree that had like an osprey or something. Yes. Little uh, osprey in there. Correct. Right? Yeah. Wow. So, it, so it got delayed by a half a year or a year uh, to demo it. Wow. So well, yeah. Kevin Joe was, Albee, Joe, Joe Albee Stadium. Albee. Yeah. So growing up, um, they would have uh, our high school would play uh, probably half their games at home, or maybe a third, I guess, because and then a third at at an, at an opposing stadium. Um, the the other, you know, they'd be the visiting team, but probably a third were at Joe Albee Stadium. The Greater Spokane League would have uh, Thursday night double headers. Uh, two games a week, I believe, on Thursday night, um, and so I'd go up to games, you know, there and 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 watch our our high school team um, play on on Thursday nights. Greg, what are you gonna do if you're gonna do this? You know, we're listening to Kevin talk about all these memories coming back uh, of things that he saw on a daily basis. Will you do filming locations? Will you be doing iconic parts of Tacoma in the oh. film? What, what will you do in sense of that? Is that something you're going to explore or not? Yeah, we, we are. So we're getting some shots with the Narrows Bridge. Um, actually, one of the houses that we're filming at this Bellatrix's houses, house is uh, on the top of the hill, one street down from Ruston Way. Beautiful house, beautiful house. Um, we have an old Victorian house, which is the house, my house for my character. It's an old Victorian, just really cool looking. Um, Superior Linen has been in Tacoma they just celebrated 97 years of being in business in Tacoma. Um, that's where we're shooting all of the uh, scenes with Joe and Brandon. Uh, I'll tell you about that later. Um, but yeah, so there'll be some steam. It's going to be really good. Um, uh, it's going to be a really good scene. We're also sponsored uh, by Amaroka. Amaroka just celebrated 100 years of being in business in Tacoma. Uh, when you come on set, there will be plenty of Amaroka and Mountain Bars. Okay, so I hope, and I know this, I can only just assume, I've been wrong a bunch in my assuming because I know nothing about movie business, but there will definitely be a Mount Rainier, Mount Baker, 
there will be some of the the Olympics. We're going to see some of the iconic mountain ranges of the Cascades. Yes. In in the film, I can only assume that. I'm sorry yes. for assuming that, but that just no. it will not you be Pacific to. Northwest to me. Yeah, you have to, and that's that's the thing about uh, Misha Tate. She's from Tacoma. Love it. She went. To, she wrestled Franklin Pierce. She started off wrestling on the boys' team at Franklin Pierce, and then she won state um, for girls from Tacoma. So will it be at Franklin? Where will it be filmed at? What high school? Silas High School used to be called Woodrow Wilson High School and okay. Mount Holmes High School. So two different high schools. Yeah. So we'll shoot at one high school for one day, the other high school for five days. Um, and then we'll do all the exteriors that like the houses and um, 30th Street Hill is a big scene. We have to have a golf cart, a van with a harness and a street permit. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So that'll be a drone shot, camera shot on the back of a golf cart, camera shot out of a car, a van, just for these guys running up this hill. But it's a great, it's great scenes. It's a great scene. Okay. So nine months out of the year in the Pacific Northwest, it is like a drizzle, rain, overcast, right? The mm -hmm. summer is quite different in the Pacific Northwest. You get a lot of sun, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. you have to manipulate certain times that you're filming for the outdoors yes. to actually get the Pacific Northwest Marine lair that I'll come yes. in and the fog and the just absolutely the Pacific Northwest. Is, I, mean, I mean, these are things I'm thinking about, right? Like the truth, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I um, mean, one of the things that they have this app that tells you exactly when the sun's going to rise, where it's at, how much aperture is coming. I mean, it's crazy. These cam the cameraman, I got his name is Ryan Purcell. Uh, he's like really good so he i don't have to worry about that that much if it rains we're prepared uh, unless it's just pouring down rain then we won't be able to do it but if there's like a little bit of rain or something it just adds to the scene and the cameras are protected and it's just the actors will get wet <laughs> yeah but they're not made of sugar greg they're not gonna melt no nah, no nah, then actually when they're running up the hill it's like it would be amazing if it kind of started raining to be honest with you i like shooting in the rain Greg, as someone who, you know, you, you're, you're road construction, right? That, that is what your job has been as a career. And that's how you've paid the bills and done everything, ra raised a family, right? That's what, that's how you did it. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, Very, very opposite of what anybody's thinking of anybody doing in the screen actors guild, uh, you know, the writers, the writers guild, right? Like all the, all these jobs, we don't think of a guy paving, right? We don't think of a guy yeah. filling potholes. We don't think of a guy building drainage gutters. We don't think about that, right? We're not thinking about a guy who's doing this just gritty hard labor. How was the crossover for you? How did you go from being a road construction guy to a filmmaker? Uh, well, I started off, I, I I had back surgery. And during my back surgery or after my back surgery, I was on L&I for almost a year. And I decided that I wanted to be an actor. So I started acting. And I was making a little bit of money doing it. Um, I was an actor for eight years, and but it just was so up and down. So I got a really good job offer. So I went back to that, and I said, "Well, I can't act and do that at the same time." So I, I might as well just make movies. So then I started making movies, and then that grew and it started getting popular. Um, my movies were, and so I was like, "Oh, maybe you know, this is something I can pursue and 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 monetize off of it later on down the road." You know, so I've always had this plan. Uh, I was I, when I was acting, I was actually on set to watch how did they do it, just like you're saying. Right. So I do extra work for 78 bucks a day in Portland. So I drive from Tacoma to Portland to be on set for one day for 78 bucks, <laughs> you know, for 12 hours. And but I would just watch, you know, like when I was on uh, leverage, I was called a featured extra. So I was always like in the in the scene somewhere with a clipboard or something like that. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I'd just be standing there waiting to cross across the screen or whatever, and they'd be setting up lights or setting up the camera or the actors would be rehearsing. I'm And I'm watching everything, bro. I was wired for sound. But, um, and like on Grimm, I was on Grimm 22 times. And uh, I got a speaking part finally, but I was on Grimm 22 times as a background extra. And they had what was called the precinct. So they used all the same extras in the precinct all the time. So I just watched all that stuff and just learned like, like lighting, everything.
everything. And that's how I got right? Yeah, for real though. For real. That's crazy. I love I love that um you did it as you were doing another job, right? You were there not making a bunch of money, but you're doing another job, but the whole time you're you're studying what everybody's doing. You're learning yeah. every job, right? Yeah, but I was also the go-to guy as an extra because they knew that I was paying attention. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story real quick. I was on a Ford commercial and I was an extra, just a regular extra, right? And this might sound funny, but this is how it was back then. So the big F-250 or whatever it is, the big truck, they had like the white family, you know, hopping in. Then they had the middle truck, which they had like an Asian family, you know, getting in it. Then they had the little uh, Ford Ranger and they had the, they had the brothers in there, right? <laughs> so, and I'm sitting back going, okay, ain't this some stuff, you know what I'm saying? So one of the actors, um, the director says, okay, go put your jeans on. And he goes, I didn't bring jeans. And like, I'm, I'm like, I got jeans, <laughs> right? And it's like, okay, go put them on. So I ran, put my jeans on, did the stuff. Um, about two weeks later, I went to the mailbox and I opened it and all these envelopes fell out and they were all checks from Ford commercials. It's like $11,000 in checks. <laughs> yeah. And really? these, Dang, man, uh, I need to get into some Ford commercials. Oh, whoa. Here's, the funny part. Here's the funniest part. The only part that they saw of me was the back of my head. They didn't even see my face or nothing. I got 11 grand for that. Oh my gosh. So, but that, you glad but that, you had your jeans? Man. But see, I was always prepared. I was always prepared because I knew that every time I went to set, I brought, because I, I graduated fashion merchandising from college. I always had all like the gear and the nice clothes. And I, so I just bring a big duffel bag full of, of clothes, you know? And so I, I was always ready with whatever they wanted. But yeah, that top, that's when I really started going like, wow, there's really money in this, you know? Especially you just saw the back of my head. Really? <laughs> Take some more pictures of the back of my head, please. Yes, definitely. Uh, you know, you talk about this and you, you were able to, to to make a living doing road construction. You branched out into to acting, right? Now into filmmaking. Um, it, what's wild to me is like, I don't even know how you connect the two, right? Because it's such a, th dude, that's a huge jump, right? Yeah. From being just a knuckle dragon, hard working, yeah. blue collar dude to going and figuring out essentially how, actors actresses production wardrobe which you already had a background in wardrobe right yeah. that's what your your yeah. your your degrees in but like just how you i just i just can't believe you made the jump it's 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 really fascinating man the, the more you talk the more i'm like maybe i just oh, need to shut up and listen more no it's just you know it's really um it's really um uh, interesting because what will drive you to do certain things right so my dad passed away a couple of years ago and one of the things he told me before he passed away, he said, Greg, as hard as you work, you should work for yourself because you, all you're going to do is drag yourself into the ground. And when you're gone, you're gone. You know what I mean? So he said, at least if you're going to do it, do it for yourself and, and like doing it. So find something that you like. And he already knew I liked doing because you should do that. You're talented in it. I believe you can do it. You know, it's like, like a couple of weeks before he passed away. And so when he passed away, I was just like, yeah. It's time my body hurts, you know, raking asphalt and pushing paint machines and, you know, jackhammering and all this stuff. It's like, man, I'm 57 years old, bro. I'm like, you know, it's time. It's time. So everything is is important. The film's important. Um, being talking to you guys, like, I would never think in a million years if somebody said, "Hey, you're gonna make a wrestling movie. You're gonna meet all these wrestling people." I would have never thought that, but I just kept trying, and this is where I landed. So this is my purpose for right now is this film. Greg, are you retired from? Are, are you are you done with being road construction and doing and and doing road work? Yeah, when I get done, when, when this movie gets in the can, that's it. My my boss, or a matter of fact, my boss is Dane Looker, who played for the Rams, and he's in the movie too. So <laughs> they already know that they already know. You know, they they wish me well. You know what I mean? He caught the first pass from Tom Brady in the NFL. That's wild. That is that wow. Learn something else today. Yeah, learn a lot in here, K Rob. Uh, <laughs> hey, what's the chances of me getting one of them there Westbrook posters with K Rob on it? Is that a thing or is that just a one, oh, one of a, a high time? Hey, do you want to tell them, K Rob? <laughs> uh, 
Well, um, there are a certain level of uh, donors, I think, through the crowdsource Indiegogo that uh, have access to those posters, I think. Signed ones. Do you need a signed one or do you just need me to get you a director's cut? <laughs> I just need like the one that's on his wall and then I know the guy who can sign it. Okay, so you want a poster of Joe? Yeah, I want a poster of Joe. I, I, got, you, I got you covered, man. I got you covered. Yeah. I mean, what? I about that. What? Okay. When did you do those shoots? When was those? Ooh. Were those photo shoots together for all three um, of them? No. Brandon and Kamaya were, and then Joe's was separate. And it was like Which a big a production, huh? K yeah, Rob? I, got a, I got a funny story I'm about to tell. I'm about to tell on you, K Rob. Uh -oh. So, so we're doing the we're doing the shoot right, and he keeps rubbing his legs and his hip and stuff. I'm like, man, you all right? He's like, man, I just can't stand like this for that long. And, you know, uh, it's just you know, I'll do it, but uh, you know, so I'm like, oh, dude, look, we can take a break. You don't have to stand there li like a statue the whole time. I, I said, you know, I just got fact, I just got a lot of mileage on those on those knees and hips, man. Yeah, I, I said, matter of fact, when we're on set, I'm gonna have a masseuse on there for you. <laughs> he did. I hope. I hope he needs it. He uh yeah, he told me that it was important to get a really comfortable pair of shoes for uh shooting. And I'm like, dude, come on, man. I'm 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 in shape, right? Like in then after that photo shoot and all that, then I was like, okay, yeah, 12, 12, 14 hour days do sound kind of long, man. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take care. Of, we'll take care of uh, all the people, though. All of our actors, we want them to be comfortable. And um, yeah, um, K. Rob did a really good job, though, because if you saw him just out on the street and you didn't know him, um, you wouldn't think that he would look that good on a poster, now would you? I mean, look at that! <laughs> look at that chiseled, that chiseled jaw, yeah, like, nine yards. Looks like he's about six feet tall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big old muscles. <laughs> Looks good, K Rob. You look good. I like I like the mechanic janitor suit too. Yeah. Well, hey, 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 and everything. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm listen. I'm not trying to give anything away. It's just no, I can no. Clearly look, see what you're doing in that he suit. Doesn't, he doesn't like being called a janitor because that's not his role. No, <laughs> I don't care. No, really. Those those are those are called coveralls, bro. They are coveralls. Tom, Tom yeah. Miller had several sets of coveralls. Trust me. I bet Tom Miller's got 50 pair of coveralls. And they are all spattered with sparks and just oil and everything grow. Chew spit, the whole nine yards. You know, you want an authentic coveralls? Go see Tom Miller. Yeah, for sure. Real working man's coveralls. Uh, Greg, where do you think um, – it all comes together and when does it finally get in the can, right? Like you're saying June now, and I understand we're speculating and things pop up, but when do you think the film gets in the can and someone's going to actually be able to sit down and watch the film Westbrook? Oh, so you're looking at 2025, but we'll get it in the can shoot in probably June, July, it'll be done filming. Cause it, it, we're scheduled for 15 days, but I'm trying to do it in 10 it uh, just depends on logistics with everybody. Uh, but yeah, so it's scheduled for 15 days, so two weeks. Um, it'll be in the can. What does the release look like and how does distribution go with it, Greg? Um, so we are going to have premieres all over. Um, we'll be in Spokane. Um, uh, maybe we'll be where you're at and we'll have a premiere in your town. Because uh, I'm just going to do it like a uh, rock, like a rock concert. So we say we're coming to Spokane. It's going to be at this theater, this theater, this theater, this theater, this theater. Prepay for your tickets. And each one will have, um, you know, probably like when we go to Spokane, you know, uh, Kevin will probably come out and, you know, Q&A and all that kind of stuff. It'll be really cool. I'll probably have a shirt gun and shoot some shirts out in the crowd. Just, you know, just make a spectacle of it. Have have fun, you know, so um, and just travel around and do that. Um yeah, that's that's pretty much how we're going to do that. Okay. So, so like you live in Ohio, right? Yeah, yeah, Cleveland area. Yeah. So what I would hey, do Cleveland. is say, hey Zeb, what what theater do you choose? And then you choose a theater. I contact that theater and say, yeah, I want to be there on this day. How much does it cost to rent the theater? And then I would sell the tickets. And then you would be up on stage with me and be like, yeah, I've been on this podcast and had questions. You know, I might even have you. Um, uh, narr not narrated. What do they call that? Hosted. MC. 
yeah. MC, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So that's just how we're going to do that. Then once all the investors get paid back, um, then I'll probably shop around for selling it. But we are trying to franchise it too. So there'll be some stipulations if I sell it. Greg, how do people, um, you know, Kevin, you have both have shot off what you're doing. You're going to start with a, with a, some fundraising tonight. How do people... Um, invest in the film and how do people put their their, their money towards Westbrook and, and get involved? So um, if you want to be like a real investor, like invest some money, like some of the other people I have, a there's a whole process for that. They can just contact me. Uh, I have legal paperwork that they can look at. Um, we're doing what's called a 50, 50 split. So they get 10% back on their initial investment. And then on the net profit on the 50% of the net profit, they get a split it between all the investors. So it could be quite lucrative for, you know, um, for people, you know, cause I mean, let's just say I did the average of all the wrestling movies that have been made and they all average out to the average number is 14 million. So if I'm making the best wrestling movie that's ever been made, uh, it sounds like there's a lot of profit to go around, <laughs> you know, and that's just how I look at it. I'm looking at numbers. I mean, you think about it, there's over 300,000 wrestlers. If you charge 12 bucks for 300,000 people, you do the math on how much money that is. Yes, and that is. Yeah, so, and that's the strategy um, with the distribution and, and getting money uh, for the film. Because when you sell, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this kind of stuff, but when you, um, let's say like you sell it to Amazon, right? You'll only get like two cents per view and they have to watch a certain part of it you know, a, a certain amount of it to even get your money. Two, two cents, two to 10 cents. You know, that's not that's not going to fly in my book. Netflix, what they'll do is they'll say, okay, we're going to give you $2 million. Here's a million now. And then we're going to take your movie and process the heck out of it. And we'll give you the other million when we're done tearing up your movie. So why not just do that myself? Yeah, I mean, the, when I look at what those streaming companies are doing, it, it is like, ah! It's insane for me to think what they're doing with um with people's intellectual property. Yeah, um, it, it, it's wild, man. I'm I, I a lot. I'm like, this is not. This is not. Yeah. Well, they're taking advantage. They're really taking advantage, and that's why. That's why the Screen Actors Guild, right? SAG, was in such a bitter war with them because they weren't paying people their value, right? Right. They still aren't. Yeah, well, they just sure. came to an agreement, but that's not. It's not a cope copial agreement there's a lot of people that didn't agree with it and that did vote now yeah but you had people out of work for over a year man yeah and, and, and a lot of them were like um what Ter like terrence howard right like they're making yeah. 12 grand right hey how about the how about the back of your head made the same <laughs> made same a amount. thousand less dollars in a 30 second commercial for, of what terrence howard made on hustle yeah. and flow I want you to think about that. Hey, are you going to Google that? I hope that you Google that. No, I know. I know. I know. My Googles it and sees that he made. Because I was listening to this interview and I was like, there's no way there's no. Yeah. And it, it's just crazy to think like if you look at just some of these iconic roles that these guys play and these women play and then yeah. you hear what they pay them. And it's like, wow. And then they, there's no uh, royalties. Yeah. They get they get it's just like that was the flat fee they got. But to your point, look what it did for. Yeah. It, and it happens in music too. Well, of course it's going to happen so, in anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So a distribution company out the gate is taking 30% of your profit, 30% for marketing and for distribution, which they have territories. So I get that and everything, but I'm still, I'm working in the United States. Okay. Yep. And I'm working with, like I said, the bigger place like Spokane, I want to go to Iowa and show however many theaters there have they have there. You know, just in Washington State, there's 170 something movie theaters. Oh wow. So I don't even have to leave the state to get my money back. Yeah. Or to get everybody's money back. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then some. Yeah. Well, you know, as K Rob says, it's a dirty business. <laughs> it's a dirty business, K Rob. Say it, K Rob. Say it, K Rob. Oh boy. To use them? Don't say it. Don't be shy now. Come on, really? 
It's a dirty business, Danny boy. It's a dirty <laughs> business. <laughs> That's a beautiful yeah. sound, but I love it. Uh, no, no, I didn't know who you. I didn't know. I said, you want me to say it to you? Yeah, or oh, Danny boy. Yeah, Danny boy's fine. You know, I mean, it's, it's Danny, that's... Danny boy. Danny, 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 Danny boy. It's a dirty business. Uh, Greg. He's 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 a he's a jobber. Yeah, jobber. <laughs> is it a curtain jerker? Is that the C curtain jerker? Yeah, curtain jerker. That means like someone who's that's that's like a low level. Oh, okay. Preliminary. Uh, yeah. If, if, if he's if he's a pro wrestler, he's a curtain jerker. He's he's coming out in the opening match when people are still getting their popcorn. Yeah, wow. that's cold blooded. Yeah, yeah, that, he, yeah. K. Rob will have to tell you that story off camera. I mean, it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's got it's got a good uh, it's got a good uh, I, I guess purpose to it. What K. Rob was trying to get at there, but Greg, where do we go from here? How do I tell more people, and how do we spread the words? Do you have a website? Do you? Yeah. Uh, how do we, we get people if they want to come and uh, audition? What do we got to do to help people and spread the word of Westbrook? So you can go to rightnowtoday.org. It has all the audition information on there. Um, there's a lot of stuff on there, actually. You can follow me on Instagram at actor marks. You can follow me on Twitter at Greg underscore marks. Um, LinkedIn, I'm Gregory Marks. And we also have a Westbrook Film Facebook page that you can go to. So there's information on all those. I update them uh, every night. I check my website every night. Um, yeah, you know, just just keep, you know, I want, I, honestly, I just want people to see this movie. That's, I mean, I want it to be so good that you cannot resist seeing it more than once. That's all I keep thinking, man. I'm excited. I'm, I'm fired up. I'm learning. Um, will, will all the scenes be rustled on Resolite? I mean, I, I hope so. I, <laughs> hey, I hope so too. Come on. All the wrestling scenes will happen on Resolite, man. You know, that's where real wrestling happens. <laughs> why, are you, why are you talking Marks, to Bear? <laughs> we're not trying to make this some J, JV film or something. Zeb. Come on, man. Yeah. I don't like junior high moves. You know that. No. <laughs> you know, I'm not into that. Uh, well, Greg, what else you got for me? Anything else? K Rob, you guys got anything yeah. else for me? Any other, any other tidbits, any other little nugs? Yeah. Well, I do want to say one thing, Zeb. I appreciate um, you allowing me uh, to be on your show. Um, it's a big deal to me. Um, a lot of people wouldn't give me uh, the opportunity and they still won't give me the opportunity because I'm not famous. I'm not, you know, the big, the big boy on campus or whatever. Uh, but I do uh, appreciate you seeing uh, the value of having me on your show. And I really appreciate that. How has your uh, reception been from local media, Tacoma media, um, Seattle media? Have you gotten any traction there with, with any of their local media, local news? Uh, well, actually, um, I just spoke with Northwest Magazine today, so I made the cover of their magazine. <clears throat> That'll be coming out in April. Um, they'll actually be at the uh, auditions, kind of taking photos and stuff like that. I haven't really reached out to too much media yet because I'm so busy right now that I don't want to over, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. Yeah. I mean, so until I have everything in place and we're green lit and everything's gone, then I'll hit the media. Um, that which will be by that time it'll be a lot easier because we'll have all the actors signed we'll have the shoot dates we'll know exactly what's going on so then I can time that uh, because it's too soon to, to really reach out too much you know articles are good podcasts are good uh, but once you start getting into the local news or uh, daily shows and things like that you got to be really careful uh, that you have all your ducks in a row when you talk about that uh, magazine, how, what's their circulation? Are they just Seattle, Tacoma? Are they all across the state? Are they Portland? Are they, where are they? I think they're Seattle, Tacoma. Yeah, that's um, but, but any, you know, any, any type of um, publicity like that, especially when you're on a cover, um, they look, they look for stuff like that. Stuff like that matters to people. Um, it, I feel good about it, but it, like I said, I really, all I want to do is make a good movie, man. I yeah. don't have to, you know, famous. I just, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Um, I learned some of that from K-Rob too, because as much as he jokes around and everything, he's a very humble person. 
And uh, it's kind of rubbed off on me a little bit and made me think about uh, my life and who I am and what kind of man I want to be. So um, it's been a really good, uh, I can say now, friendship with me and K-Rob. And he's he's actually, even though I might know more about film and everything, he's actually mentoring me. So it's it's really you know, because I've been pissed off a couple times and <laughs> you know, okay, Rob, man, you know what they said to me? He's like, hey, great, calm down. You know, uh, you got to think about that. <laughs> so it's really cool, man. Um, yeah, just wrestling is just cool, Zeb, period. So yeah, this how, is one of the toughest sports around. How has your, your reception been? You said that they were calling you the Westbrook guy at the Tacoma Dome. That's where the uh, Washington State High School tournament takes place. Um, what was the reception like for the people who were like, "Ah, oh, you're the you're the the Westbrook guy"? Was it everybody? Was it fifteen people? Was it hundreds of people? What do you think that the the uh, the, the reception was to you? I think, I think that a lot of people were afraid to approach me, to be honest with you. Uh, but the people that did, like, they would just grab my shirt. Hey. <laughs> you're the Westbrook guy. Yeah. And I talked to him and, you know, I ordered a shirt from you or, or just, it was just crazy because people from other States were talking to me about the movie and, uh, you know, have heard about the movie. So that was really interesting to me um, in that point of it. Cause I had, I can't remember the guy What I think he's from, he was from far away, but he was like, said, yeah, I'm going to fly back in. I'm going to come to the audition. I'm like, I don't even know who he is, you know, but it was, it was cool that to, for that excitement, you know, um, I could tell, well, I was on the floor, so I had a media pass as well. So most people on the floor were concentrating on uh, wrestling, but outside of that, when I'd walk around, yeah, I was, you know, I had a Westbrook shirt on. Oh, I heard of that movie. I heard, I heard it's going to be really good, you know, stuff like that. I so, love it. I love it. I, yeah, you're you're getting the reception. I, 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 you know, it feels like I thought you would, but you never know. You know, people get a little nutty sometimes, and I, it's good to hear that you're getting a good reception. Uh, well, guys, you got you got anything else for me? Either one of you got any stories? You got anything else? Any other tidbits you can give me? Anything? Yeah, he's really digging, isn't he, K. Rob? He is, <laughs> man. I'm like, what, dude? Your kids, uh, little Ferd, little Ferd, and Tommy aren't home tonight, and Sarah's not there, or something. Now you're giving us a lot of time here, Zeb. Listen, I, I, I like to, epic I like scenes, man. Like hey, this know. is great. Um, yeah, you know, so we just, uh, yeah, we just the high school state championships uh, concluded on Saturday. So, hey, congrats, you know, that was good. Congrats, Kevin. Your daughter yeah. won the state title. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. You know, always cool being there and, you know, watching your kids, you know. Yeah. I'm a fan yeah we did an interview all. with uh, with, with K, K Rob there, too. That's for the, uh, so we're making a uh, oh, yeah, yeah. video and we're making a documentary video because I've been documenting from when I started every time I travel or go to a tournament or any, even when I went to Fargo, I filmed all that stuff. And we're making a documentary out of that before the movie comes out. You're making a film on the film. Yeah. See, see, there you go. If I don't ask, I don't get an answer. I got to press a little bit. I got to know. But if I don't ask, I don't get I don't get the tidbits like that. I don't get little little nuggets like that. Yeah. Right yeah. So Greg, are, are Greg, are you filming this tonight? Are you filming Zeb no. filming you to put this yeah. in the doc? I was going to, but you I didn't have to because I was trying to set up my lighting. My camera's right over there. <laughs> how about you can just rip the video off and do what you want? I don't yeah, care. I don't want to tell a director how to direct, but yeah. that might have been a good idea. Yeah. Do you, Greg? Yeah, so then, you. I, hope you, I hope you come visit, man. Come down. I'll, I'll let you know all the shoot dates and everything. Yeah. And I'll have your name on the uh, VIP list so that when you come up, you won't get harassed by security. Okay. Yeah, someone, someone will escort you to where I'm at. So oh. yeah, yeah, and then Zeb might be he he might actually be out for camp this summer, so he might be in the area, you know. Yeah, I might be uh, around. Might be around. Yeah. Hey, Rob and I, we, we we do that. We link up. We talk. So have you seen these, Zeb? No, to 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 go. I want to hear it. Talk to me. Um, so I've been uh, selling hats too. Uh, we have over three. We have over three hundred shirts out on the street right now. Uh, Westbrook shirts, but uh, I do customize hats. So I need six more people to order hats because I need 12. If I get 12 hats, I get them for half price. 
Ooh, Ooh I like that. Know. I like that price point. I like that selling point. Uh, yeah, Can I yeah. see the whole hat. Can I see the back? Can I see everything? Oh, oh. let's fit it, yo. Yeah, I like it. I like it. What do you get? You got. You got. You got a, a, a your crown. You got a high crown on that. What is it called? Crown. That's the name of the hat. Crown. Oh, it crown. is. Yeah. Yeah, I take the. I'm a low pro. I'm a low pro guy here. I like you, you can you can order it, and then I have another hat that actually says Westbrook across it, and I have another hat that has like the college W. I like yeah. the W on your that's on that hat right there. Everybody seems to like this one. I really I like, like that this one. one. I wear the most. I hey. thought you were trying to drop some husky. Washington Husky on me or something. I don't know. I was like, I, I don't know what that is. That's black and gold, man. That's black and gold. That's I, Westbrook. I, you know, we, we were giving you the business about your lighting. I, I couldn't tell. You know, I'm just saying. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I appreciate you. Um, hey, we'll probably talk if you have any time between here and June, if that's when shooting starts, if we can get another chunk of your time and talk about where you're at and yeah do updates on this you know we did one in the fall we're in the uh you know winter spring here soon and uh i'm just curious man and i support it and i just i, I support westbrook in the film and i just i want to see what it's about man i'm excited yeah yeah we're excited uh i'm excited for you to come out and be on set too man yeah okay rob you good hey thank you zeb say hi to sarah and ferdy and tom I will. I will. And uh, we'll, we'll, and, we'll get uh, out there in the, the great Pacific Northwest to check it out. All right. That sounds great. Greg Marks, thank you for the time. Kevin Roberts, thank you for the time. Check out Westbrook. Probably we're going to see a release date sometime in 2025. Correct, Greg? Yep. 2025 is what we're shooting for. All right, guys. Thank you for the time. Good luck to you guys moving forward. All right, you guys. Hey, thanks, Zeb. Appreciate you, man. Yep.